Hi guys, coaching actuaries is in the house. Yes, we have Coach Kester with us live on the RJ Speaks channel together with his partner, Brian. So stay tuned, but before we get going, have you subscribed? If not, this is the time to hit the subscription button now. And he's going to be sharing the amazing story on how coaching actuaries came about. Were there challenges? Was it smooth? It's time to find out, but subscribe. But before that, thank you, Coach Kesta, for this amazing shirt and my Coaching Actuary sticker. I mean, it's the main calculator, who knows? So it's time to get going. Right? Welcome, guys, to the RJ Speaks channel. And today I have with me two great men who will be sharing the tips we all have been waiting for to this moment. So this is the RJ Speaks channel, and today we are going to be talking more about some tips you need as an exam candidate coming from these great men. So I have with me David Kester, as we all know, Coach Kester, and um, Brian as well, who is here to be like to support him too, but they are team members anyway. So at this moment, I would like them to introduce themselves to us all because we are all eager and waiting to hear from them. They actually know some 3D animations we've been seeing in coaching actuaries, but this is real today. So, um, <laughs> David Kista, can we hear from you some introduction? Sure, we're, we're actually in um, coaching actuaries right now. And I'm Dave, by the way, and you are? I'm Brian. All right, yeah, yeah we got that straight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, we're just glad to be here. And uh, uh, we know that you're out there uh, because RJ promises us that people will be watching this. So <laughs> whoever you are, uh, we we don't see you, but we're we're glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, and um, since um we know you to be like the faces of um coaching actuaries, would you want to share with us what motivated you to do this? So in the time past, I don't know what steady material have been in the system for so long. But when you mentioned coaching actuaries, me coming from Western, like West Africa, it's very popular. Most students know that to be like a major study material for actuarial exams. So what was the motivation for you in starting something so new? And um, did you ever even feel like it's going to work or no failures? <laughs> We, we, you know, we knew it was going to work like a charm from the very beginning, yeah. uh, but unfortunately, uh, it didn't necessarily work that way. But uh, we, we are here today just to kind of share a little bit of our story. Uh, and I'm not sure if you caught, but Brian and I started the company way back 1995, 95, yeah, ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it it was not called coaching actuaries at the time. It was called you get it, Salt, okay. Solutions. Salt Solutions. <laughs> yeah, and we'll show it Salt okay. Solutions. Yeah, and so I uh, a copy of that shirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the first shirt that we got. This is Salt Solutions, and uh, it goes way back. Uh, probably we got it. I don't know, maybe around 1995. But the logo there was the original logo that we had, and uh, Salt actually stood for something. Uh, it stood for software and advice using leading technology uh, because Brian and I were kind of uh, leading technology kind of guys and we were soft. We gave advice um, and, <laughs> and we use software to give advice. So, uh, and we kind of like the salt theme. Um, and I, 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 what I remember about it, uh, we kind of liked, uh, you know, it, it's a biblical thing, you know, salt of the earth. Uh Okay. And it's something that you you put on like steak, but no one says, man, that's good salt. Um, they would say, you know, that's good steak and the salt made that steak better. And that's kind of how we viewed uh, our services is that people weren't going to necessarily go around and say what we did was great, but what we were going to do is to make their business great. And so that's that was kind of the motivation for uh, how we came up with salt is what I remember. Yeah, it was. Uh... Starting out as consultants, taking a little risk to go out and after some changes in the company we worked for, I guess, and mm -hmm. to try to get some business and do some different things. I know there's probably both uh, consultants and uh, company actuaries out there. And so 
uh, we kind of know what uh, I've done both, I guess, and mm -hmm. enjoyed both. But yeah, it was a leap of faith to some extent, but we had uh, we had some technology that we knew about. So mm -hmm. there was technology back in the 90s, but <laughs> you guys probably don't all know that. But yeah. And one of the first pieces of technology. So we're just going to tell a little story today. So we're going to have a little fun. This is about having fun today. It's not a very serious day. So uh, right here, uh, HP calculator. This was our technology so that we, Brian and I had, uh, and you can program this thing. I don't know, maybe around 50 memory. Yeah, it's about, yeah, about 2K. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we would program how to calculate um, immediate annuities, um, even commutation functions. And we, we did all kinds of stuff on here that you wouldn't believe you could do on a little calculator. But this was uh, uh, high tech for us back in the days. And and both Brian and I still have our own copies of the, at least I've got my copy of the calculator and I still use it today. Uh, so that that was the technology that we started with, but we, we did use computers, but uh, we probably use that calculator as much as we use the computer. So. Okay. I like the concept of salt because, you know, salt is something no one would want to be eaten and yes, working so. independently, yeah. but together it works the magic or it works the or gives out the solution. So I like the concept of salt. So yeah. um, how long would you say has coaching actually reached like being in the system? I know it's for as long as I started the actual career, but how old would you say coaching actually is? Or ah, that was I'm glad old. you asked. So <laughs> we started in 1995 and then maybe around, uh, let's, let's go with this guy. Oh Next. yeah, that was this first, guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got all kinds of things. So right here, is our next salt solutions. Okay. So this says water, all right? So this is what Brian and I did as one of our first projects. And water actually, we liked acronyms back then, I don't know. You can tell, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> it stands for Windows Actuarial Technology Evaluating Risk and Return. It's kind of a mouthful. Uh, but what it was, was actually pricing software, valuation software, uh, different types of actual software. And uh, Brian and I uh, kind of worked on uh, creating software for actuaries to price uh, traditional life, universal life, annuities, health insurance. It really did quite a bit. Uh, it did so much though, unfortunately, we didn't sell very much of it. <laughs> we wanted. <laughs> but that was, you know, uh, uh, a thing that we had big plans for, big hope for, uh, but it didn't really pan out. So you talk about coaching actuaries yeah. kind of panning out. Well, the water um, was our first attempt and it did not pan out, but okay. we learned a lot um, about it. And, um, but I think about this time was when uh, our company changed a little bit because uh, we were doing water and uh, you uh, kind of had a, a, a higher calling. <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> so what was this calling? Well, we uh, we were doing water. We were uh, the business was going pretty good, but I'd been thinking about maybe going into a, a different career after I was I got the ASA exams. I was an associate for quite a while. And then probably about, I don't know, 60 percent of the of the society or the fellowship exams I got done on. Um, and then I decided that. Uh, I started failing them at a higher rate than normal <laughs> <laughs> and trying to figure out why, because they weren't that hard at first. Well, they were hard. I mean, you obviously miss them, but um, uh, you don't get them all. But uh, I, I started, it was working in my church a lot and uh, some advice of other people, I decided to go to seminary. So uh, moved from Iowa to Texas and, and, and did that. And Dave was very gracious. And I did some work while mm -hmm. we were in Austin. Uh, with a couple companies in San Antonio, but uh, but uh, so uh, so Dave then took over and, and started that business and kind of made when you're talking about coaching actuaries, that really wasn't part of what I did, um, you know, other than I prayed for you a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think, um, and you, you would ask questions and we would still do some, uh, you know, some brainstorming, but that was a big change in our so for me, it was kind of like. Uh, I guess, you know, if you, I'm sure a lot of actuaries are watching this, you know, you fail and you, uh, well, why did I fail and how can I do better? And uh, for me, eventually it was, you know, maybe it wasn't where I should be, you know, 
uh, I needed to study Hebrew and Greek and theology and all that, and that's <laughs> the direction I went. But then Dave, you mm -hmm. took over, and that's when the company started to actually. Once I got out of the way, it kind of took off. Well, no, kind no. Of. <laughs> well, we did we did uh, do another change, and so um, we decided. Well, I guess I guess at this point I decided. So there's our new logo. New okay. Name, new name, Salt Solutions. And we got um, a different, like a salt shaker. And there's a, a big story around that, but uh, I'm not going to go into that. But there is something about like the Star of David in there, whatever. There's the S for salt. Mm -hmm. uh, but we went from software and advice using leading technology. And see, uh, I kind of learned that leading technology sometimes was bleeding technology. And, you know, you go out and consult and you don't want your technology to be bleeding. So I, I didn't really want to be at the bleeding edge of technology. Uh, but what I kind of thought about was I really believe in the long term, that okay. actuaries are here for the long term. And so uh, I kept the salt name and I just rebranded it as software actuaries with long term solutions. So, okay. you know, we still got the salt solutions part, but changed kind of the focus of really not so much leading technology, but long-term solutions that these are solutions that are going to last. And this was around maybe 2003 is when uh, we did that. And um, again, we um, during this time, we were doing different types of consulting, but we were also coming up with educational software for okay. people passing exams. And RJ, you probably didn't know that. Uh, have you ever heard of StudySoft? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was by Salt Solutions. So that was actually, Brian wrote the program for StudySoft. And the, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in, in uh, the 1990s. Um, and that was for different exams for the upper level exams. And it was like a Q&A software where you would go through the study material you know, it would ask you a question and then uh, you would try to answer it and then it would give you the answer. Uh, but it was like short answer questions is okay. what it was. And so that was study soft. Uh, and, you know, we sold a few hundred, but no big deal. Um, and then, you know, as Brian said, he went off to, um, to a seminary. And then I came up with plan B um, and that was conquer. So RJ, have you heard of conquer? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look what you're learning. Yeah, yeah look what you're learning. So you think you know, it was all about success, but I'm here to tell you, no, it's a, there's a lot of failure that um, happens. And so Conquer was plan B and Conquer was for the lower level exams, like okay. coaching actuaries. But it, again, it was a uh, Windows based software. So we would send out CDs and they would install there and they would be, you know, for your interest theory exams, your life contingencies and all those multiple choice exams. And it was a lot kind of like ADAPT in that you would um, be given practice problems and then you would try to solve them. Uh, but it was uh, not online. It was something that you had to install on your computer. And uh, once again, we sold, a, you know, a few hundred, uh, but, uh, you know, that that didn't work. And, and so that was kind of from 2000 to, you know, maybe 2007 is when I, I decided not to do Conquer anymore. And really what was paying the bills was the the uh, consulting part. Okay. And so I kept doing the consulting. Uh, and uh, I always liked doing the educational part. Uh, I got my degree as a math teacher. And so that was always what I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, it was something that, you know, I hadn't been successful at. And then, uh, you know, a third time is when um, uh, a guy came up to me, uh, a professor at Northwestern College, and he had an idea uh, with kind of a um, algorithm for ADAPT. And so then he and I decided to work on that. And I always wanted to try it online. And now I had an, a programmer that could program online. And so uh, we uh, programmed ADAPT. And at first it was Salt Solutions dash adapt okay um and that actually started doing halfway decent uh and i was getting excited about it and i thought you know uh if this is going to actually like live i think it needs to have its own domain it needs to have its own name rather than salt solutions the consulting company slash adapt and i kind of thought about 
well, I don't want it just to be adapt. I want it to be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where I kind of thought about the name Coaching Actuaries. So that was around 2010 is when that occurred. And I was still doing consulting and we, we were a pretty small company at that time. Uh, but then uh, we, you know, we grew pretty steady after that. And uh, around 2016 is when we completely got out of consulting and then just stuck with the coaching actuaries part. Um, uh, and, um, and then to maybe finish the story off, we decided to get into the CFA market. And so CFA, you know, chartered financial analyst. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've heard of that. Uh, and, uh, we had a couple different names for that. We called, um, at first we called it past tense. Um, then we had another name. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, and then we came up with a third name for that brand. And that third name is actually Salt Solutions. Okay. Here we come. Right yeah. <laughs> and sure. so so now you can go out to the, um, you know, uh, type in saltsolutions.com and you won't see this, the old cons actual consulting. You'll see the new CFA um, study material that is put together by the people of Coaching Actuaries. Mm -hmm. And it's just rebranded as Salt Solutions. And uh, so there's a nice kind of long story about how salt, you know, started off salt of the earth and kind of, kind of went away and, and, and now it's back. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I really was excited to have Brian uh, come and join me so people could see that because, you know, people kind of know me, but um, coaching actuaries wouldn't be here if Brian wouldn't have been there with me. And so I wanted everyone to kind of put a face to that and hear a little bit about that story because yeah, it's an, it's an interesting story and there's a lot more we could really tell about it. Um, but that's kind of the short part of it all. Okay. Hopefully you'll move from salt to light in the next phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. New metaphor. <laughs> and um, I appreciate like the process that you shared because for most people, even like myself or people watching, we might have assumed that it started as coaching actuaries all mm -hmm. this while, and it might have been maybe easy or you had maybe students already to purchase, mm -hmm. but like learning from your experience and knowing the essence mm -hmm. of process and appreciating it in human growth is something that we can all take from. Because I remember I, I didn't even start as RJ Speaks before. Mm -hmm. I used to be very shy and uh, reserved, like I don't uh -huh. know, like camera. <laughs> So I, it was actually RJ writes. So I just write ah. like devotional or my thoughts on social media. And that is it. I don't get to interact with anybody. So that's easy for me to do. But mm. with time now I can face the camera. So I really appreciate the process part. So mm. now to another part where I think most people are yearning to hear from the original sources. They might have read online, but I think this is a more active kind of learning where they want to know. I don't think they really want to know. So let's start with um, about the failing. What do candidates do that make them fail? I am assuming nobody wants to fail, but once you know what to do that makes you fail, then it's going to guide you not to do them so that you pass as well. So mm -hmm. let's start with maybe some things that candidates often do that make them fail. Then we transition to what to do to make them pass. I don't know if they're related, but mm -hmm. let's work for that. Angle. Yeah. So uh, kind of like, in other words, like uh, you're looking for advice if people fail an exam, like yeah. how to overcome that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, you become a minister. It's really <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. That might not be for everybody. Yeah, uh, there, uh, but that I mean, seriously, that's part of what I wanted to people to hear is that uh, uh, that we we even use that word fail, and I I just think that's a, an awful word to use right. because sometimes it just means okay, I have to retake the test, but then sometimes it means that that's not the right calling for you, and so at some point, you know. Being an actuary is not for everybody, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, and so it's important to kind of know yourself and to uh, kind of do a uh, you know a good inventory and don't force becoming an actuary if that's not something you're passionate about. And I think really that was the big thing with Brian was that um, what I noticed when you were going through is that 
uh, your passion was reading the Bible and reading theology. And I mean, that's what you wanted to do. And studying just became like a real chore um, as time went on. Yeah, at first, yeah. you know, you were into it, but then I just think your your passions went somewhere else. And that was, I don't think it was so much even failing the exams. I think it, um, you know, that you had a direction in your life that was leading you elsewhere. And uh, and then that led to success for him. And, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of people, um, I mean, if you're taking actual exams, you're a smart person. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, you should try to become an actuary if there's something better for you to be doing. So don't, don't force yourself to becoming an actuary. Uh, but also don't give up just because you failed either. Uh, as we all know, a lot of things that are worth going after in life really are things you have to work at and you kind of need to expect disappointment along the way. Uh, you know, I had my share of disappointment. I had my share of disappointment in getting my business going. You know, it took 20 years to get where it was really succeeding on the educational side. And so, uh, you know, that's that long term idea is you have to be willing to be in it for the long term. So I don't know, those are some ideas I have on the how to deal with failing part, if that helps at all. OK, so then now let's move to like what to do to pass. So mm -hmm. or maybe let's just go back again. So maybe for people who feel do you think that maybe there's something they are doing, maybe they are not completing the material thoroughly or maybe they are not um passing practicing mm -hmm. maybe as much practice tests as mm -hmm. possible i know mm -hmm. it works hand in hand like what they do that make them feel and what to do if you want to pass kind of like complement each other mm -hmm. so if you want to pass what are some of the tips or skills you need to have mastered like to pass mm -hmm. these actuarial exams, knowing the demands that it comes with. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we can, we took exams a long time ago, uh, but when we went through it, we kind of uh, collaborated some. Uh, so I think working together with people helps. Uh, obviously you, you're the one taking the exam, but uh, in the upper level exam, Brian and I, we actually shared notes. Yeah, we did that. On some of that. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that was a great idea or not, but uh, it did help, uh, I think, for me, just that collaboration because some things that I struggled with, you know, Brian understood and so forth. And and so uh, I do think it's important to be connected with other people on that journey, whether or not you do a lot of studying together or not. Uh, you do want to kind of uh, be part of uh, other people who are going through it and not just be in very isolated because uh, it's hard to spend that much time studying if you're not really connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think you have the, and when we did that collaboration, one of the things that we ended up doing was you had to be able to tell the other person both what it meant and how to apply mm -hmm. it. You know, and sometimes if we study only on our own or you don't get something like mm -hmm. coaching actuaries material, you know, you don't you're not able to apply it, which is what you're doing in an exam. Really, you're you, you might know the material really well, but you're not able to perform in the in the exam because you really haven't right. applied it any. It, it's really, you know, to use a good metaphor, it's really not that much different than a biblical text. You know, find the meaning mm -hmm. of the text. What did, you know, or if you're finding the meaning of, you know, investments or uh, actual mathematics, whatever you're doing, but then now how do I apply it to the particular problem or my life if you're doing biblical studies, but, but, you know, how do I apply it to the problem that's there? Because you, you got having the content. I found myself that when I was failing at the end, I kind of understood the meaning. I just, I just didn't, I wasn't doing a good job of applying it to uh, the different scenarios that come out there. Cause I could do the practice ones fine. Mm -hmm. but they never put the practice ones on the test. You know, they put the, you know, different ones on there. And uh -huh. if you don't have a good job of being able to apply it, mm -hmm. which I think you guys have done a good job with, with the coaching actuaries to, to help that go that extra step. And you can see it in the statistics, I guess, but it's the, uh, and then, then the big thing after that, and you've talked about this is then you go in and you're kind of calm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're always gonna be a little nervous, but, but you're like, you know, I got this. I know how to, and I, I, not only do I know the material, I know how to apply it to whatever question they ask. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think that's that's a big part too. Mm-hmm. It's a, two, you got to do both, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, I feel everybody out there, you're probably pretty smart. Um, and when you fail that first time, you're like, okay, I'm not as smart as I thought I was, <laughs> you know, it's humbling. Yeah. You know, so you yeah. got to think of new ways to do it. Right. And I, I uh, you know, you'd be amazed, RJ, uh, how much of the material I've learned uh, while I'm teaching it at Coaching Actuaries. I mean, you think that, and you're a teaching assistant, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Do are you like a hundred percent perfect knowledge of all of the material that you're teaching? Or no, are there things- I, I don't think so because sometimes like the more you're teaching, the more you gain like insight into what you yeah, yeah. a different perspective right. about this. Right. And so for me, uh explaining that to someone else uh does something to make things clearer in my mind that may not be completely clear like i've got dots of information like i've got formulas but those dots really aren't connected sometimes until i explain it to someone and then all of a sudden things become clear and solidified and then i've got that confidence like oh wow i actually do know this stuff i was able to articulate that's you know how it works for me often uh and so i know when brian and i were working together uh we would um explain things together and that i would learn things better just by explaining it to Brian. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think another thing that was big that we did back then, even though it looks different now, was the whole idea of active learning. And even though we were putting together this study soft, we would type our material in ourselves. And so we would have to read, you know, all this material, the the upper level exams, formulate the questions and then formulate the answers. And Uh that took a lot of work. Uh, and in doing so, it forced you to actually uh, learn as you're going. Uh, I know I've heard people say that, uh, you know, we've got formula sheets at Coaching Actuaries, and they say, no, they like to build their own formula sheets because yeah. it, in the process of building it, they're learning as they go. And so whatever that is, I think the idea is an act of learning is really important. You don't want to just passively sit and read this stuff. You got to find a way to engage in the material, um, whatever that means, you know, we try to do adapt. So it's engaging for you, but you just can't sit there and watch me talk on a video and Mm -hmm. expect to learn it. You've got to, you know, you've got to get in and, and work at it yourself. Mm -hmm. I totally, um, agree with that too, because for my FM for the part that I had like an active study partner, it made the learning much easier. And I realized like personally that I spent less time studying than studying on my own or even studying in group. In group, you can have some passive learning because of the large numbers, but having like a maybe one or two active study partners like really helps. And anytime you're solving questions, you're able to relate or remember that, okay, this person said this about this concept or this, this and that, and it makes coordination very easier. So, but most people, I think um on one recent um video I did, like a person asked me, so what's like the end level that is um really comfortable, like with coaching actually, because some people say, okay, so I have end level of five and you, like I passed. Someone who says, okay, I had end level maybe seven something and it's different. So mm-hmm. do you think um, other factors like come into play? Because everybody is keen on, hitting the seven end level when it comes to coaching actually so Mm -hmm. anything about it or I don't know if maybe having an end level maybe seven point something makes you overly confident and you relax Mm -hmm. in the exam room or your Mm -hmm. mindset on the exam day has Mm -hmm. a lot to do with it but what end level would you say we should work at and what habits should we have after we have like a desired end level Right. Well, that's a good question. Uh, you don't may not even know what an earned level is. That's uh, kind of like a new thing. <laughs> that's we gotta, a new I'm thing, not going to yeah. quiz you, but yeah. it's part of our ADAPT software. Uh, and uh, basically, it's like what we had before. It's a scale of one to 10, zero to 10, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, your earned level then is uh, how you uh, uh, progress through your practice problems. And uh, zero is worse, 10 is best. We recommend you get like a seven. Uh, to be, we think you're 95% um, confident that you pass the exam, at least based upon our research. So, you know, seven is a good earn level to get. 
But sometimes, though, um, as RJ mentioned, that that may not be better than a five. Sometimes a five is better than a seven. So there's not a perfect system there uh, because what's really important is not that you can do the hardest problems, but that you can do the average problems more accurate. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like golf, you know, you may think, uh, I could hit the ball, you know, the furthest and I could really, you know, hit that really long drive. But if you hit it in the woods, you know, that's not so good. Where that person that just hits it down the fairway, nice and steady every time they're going to score well. And that's really what a five and six is. It's just hitting that ball straight down the middle. Um, and if you can do that, um, and then do that on the exam, you're going to, you're going to pass most of the time. Uh, so there, it's not an exact science and we're actually in the process of rethinking that. And, um, uh, there might be some things that we, uh, do to change that. It still is, you know, kind of work in progress, but we're putting a lot of thought into making sure that this adapt system will be as effective as possible to help you right. pass the exam. Mm hmm I, I totally like agree with all that you said because a five might actually maybe good than a seven, depending mm -hmm. on like the questions that were sampled up to you in uh, the difficulty level and how mm -hmm. fast do you even um like pass them. So you might have taken maybe five exams to achieve maybe a seven, but someone might have taken maybe 15 exams and they really learned from their mistakes to achieve a five. So maybe that person might have more experience with average like mm -hmm. questions. So right. it's really helpful. And the more you practice also should help you to make or get maybe a solidified like end level. Right. So before um we wrap up, um, we're actually going to have like a part two of this because there's more out there like for you all to know. And there's, I think the part two has a more exciting part that I think you should anticipate and save the day for it so before we wrap up um coach kesta would have something to say to us all before we move to part two sure well um if you're an actuary and your focus is on uh passing actuarial exams uh part one is the one you want to watch which you just <laughs> got to watch it uh part two uh we kind of have even a little more fun uh more fun maybe than what we're having now if that's possible uh but uh, what, what we're going to do, and primarily me, is we're going to be talking about a story, a math story. And uh, uh, really, uh, it's just kind of uh, enjoying math from a different perspective. I call it playing with math. And so it has nothing to do with actual science. So if, if your only focus is on actual science, uh, then uh, you can maybe skip part two. But if you want to kind of have some fun playing with math, uh, and uh, maybe seeing math in a different light, that's what part two is about. And so that's what we'll be doing. Okay. So guys, if you're happy about this session, now is the time for you to subscribe to the channel by hitting the button now. And um, thanks for your time, David and Brian. And thank you guys for watching. So we bring part one finally to an end and hopefully that you learned a lot or you've had enough insight into the actual career and some exam tips and for now we are anticipating part two so it's a bye here bye bye guys <laughs> see you soon <laughs>